The Toho Project has got to be the longest running series of games developed by one person, with 17 mainline installments of the Anime Girl Bullet Hell shooters released in just over 20 years. These games are developed entirely by one guy who goes by the handle Zune, from the art to the programming to, of course, the music. Zune has gone so far as to call the games a vehicle primarily for his music, and his music has garnered an international cult following of its own, with hundreds of fan arrangements and remixes of tunes from throughout the games strewn all across the internet. Listening to some of the series' music, it's not hard to pick up on some common elements that make up the Toho sound. Fast-paced, driving drum beats and quick flurries of arpeggios bubbling under dramatic, harmonized synth melodies, with a reliable stable of chord progressions that you see pop up in tune after tune. One element that might be less obvious is the frequent use of key changes. Most tunes will change key at least a couple of times, with some moving through four or five different keys before finishing out their loop. That's certainly unusual, but what's interesting is that these key changes do a lot to shape the emotional arc of each piece of music. Each point of climax or sudden twist or dramatic emotional shift is almost always accompanied by a change of key, and modulations both augment the effect of these individual moments as well as help shape the structure of each tune as a whole. In Hartman's Yokai Girl from Subterranean Animism, the main section of the piece is wild and hectic, with choppy, syncopated rhythms and chromatic chord movements assaulting you in a fast-paced 7-8 time signature. The harmony keeps close to the tonic E-flat minor chord, but slides around to the chords a half-step above and below it to create a frantic feeling. This establishes a very clear vibe for the tune, but as the piece develops, this vibe is contrasted with a new, more delicate section in the key of A minor. Take a listen to this. Now tell me, would you expect that these last two examples I played were from the same piece? There is a huge difference in tone between the two sections we just heard, and the difference is accentuated with the huge distance between the keys of E flat minor and A minor. The distance between any two keys can be measured by the number of notes that these keys have in common, and any two keys that are a tritone apart from each other, like E flat minor and A minor, are going to have as few notes in common as is physically possible in equal temperament tonal music. Microtones, go home! This leads us to the fun part, taking a look at how this key change actually happened. A short transition section explores further the opening section's idea of chords moving around by a half step, and we see alternating minor and diminished chords rising chromatically up from our tonic E flat minor in a sequence, eventually ending up on a G sharp diminished chord. This fits perfectly logically with the tune up to this point, but also sets up our key change perfectly, as diminished chords generally want to pull up to resolve on the chord a half step above them. The momentum of this chromatically rising melody pushes the final G sharp melody note up to an A right as we make the shift to the new key, and the effect is a huge release of tension. Even though we're in the key of A minor, our resolution to the actual A minor chord is delayed by a bar as we instead land on the flat 6 chord of the key, F, and walk up diatonically to A minor. Not only is this the reverse approach from the previous section, which started on its minor tonic and walked up chromatically from there, this flat 6, flat 7, minor 1 progression is one that gets used all the time in Toho music for more sentimental moods. This particular progression comes up so often that I'm positive it's Zune's default emotional sounding chord progression. Anyways, moving to A minor for this section represents a big shift in the piece as a whole, but key changes don't have to be quite this dramatic to be effective. The relatively subdued piano melody and synth pads of this A minor section slowly build over the course of the rest of the piece to a climax that launches us back to the top of the form as the piece loops. 
elements that had dropped out to give the section a sparser texture gradually come back in, with the drums offering syncopated kick drum hits and synths coming in to double the melody to help build up intensity. As this build crosses over a hump, with the drums coming back in in full force and swirling arpeggio backing figures joining the mix, the piece accentuates this noticeable rise in intensity by suddenly shifting the key up by a half step. This gives the music a little added boost, which combines with all the other building musical elements to make this crescendo just that much more intense. Changing the key up a half step has kind of a bad reputation as a trick that songwriters pull to be able to stretch out a song without having to write any new musical ideas. But here it's part of the arrangement, working together with all of the other musical ideas at play, and it makes a very tangible contribution to the effect that this part of the piece was going for. In Necrophantasia from Perfect Cherry Blossom, the whole structure of the tune is tied to how the tune changes key. Each new section is accompanied by a dramatic modulation, with the piece moving through five different keys before it's done. We start off with a bold melodic statement in C-sharp minor, setting the stage with a catchy synth melody over a chord progression that's very typical of Toho music, with chords descending from or ascending to our tonic C-sharp minor in stepwise motion. Once again, we've immediately established this piece's musical identity. Skipping ahead a little bit, a more subdued section in B minor brings down the intensity and acts as a transition into the climax of the song. Sort of a calm before the storm approach. Notice the use of Zune's go to flat 6 flat 7 1 progression here, interrupted on the second phrase by a first inversion 5 chord, this F sharp 7 over A sharp. This chord is key to a very clever way of changing keys moving into the following climactic section. The section repeats, ending on this walk up from G to A to F sharp 7 over A sharp, which is just begging for a resolution to our tonic B minor chord. The A sharp in the bass, especially coming up from the previous A, really wants to push up to that B, and the fact that the F sharp chord on top jumped back down to a G the first time around makes that resolution to B minor all the more tantalizing this time. Right when this resolution feels like it should come though, we instead get a whole bar of just this kind of weird drum fill before leaping straight into the climax of the tune, a huge emotional melodic hook in the key of A minor. We will once again see the classic flat 6 flat 7 1 progression starting on this F, and setting up this F with an F sharp chord gives us a surprise drop down by a half step, a little jolt, like when you're running downstairs and you miss a step by accident. Using the third of the F sharp chord in the bass, A sharp adds to the power of this transition because it gives a nice fourth leap down to F. If you think of it as a B flat to F in the bass, it's easier to see that relationship. And moving a bass line in fourths or fifths gives it a lot more weight than moving it in steps or half steps. All of this plays into the effect that the music is going for here, getting you to let your guard down and then smacking you in the face with a super hyped up hook out of nowhere. This is the structural high point of the tune, but because of the looping nature of the music we need some way to get back from here to where we started, both tonally and emotionally. To do this the music slows down its momentum after a couple repetitions of this A minor section by dropping down a half step for a new section which takes the same basic idea of the A minor section and expresses it in a slightly chiller, more melodically sparse way. 
this key change is facilitated by a very cool technique that you'll see pretty often in Toho music. The final cadence of the A minor section ends with a Picardy third, meaning the F to G walkup resolves to a surprise A major chord rather than A minor. This is immediately followed by the key dropping down a half step which would make its first chord an E major. Back to back, this gives us a very clever 4 to 1 relationship between the A major chord and the E major chord it resolves to, making for a very smooth transition between two very different keys. The same type of idea is used to end off the tune and loop back to the top. In the new key of G-sharp minor, the tune ends off with another Picardy third resolution from E to F-sharp to G-sharp major. Surprise! Only this time we loop straight from here to the first section we heard way back at the beginning, the one in C-sharp minor. This Picardy third G-sharp major tonic chord simultaneously acts as the five chord in the next key of C-sharp minor, making the transition back to C-sharp super smooth. A chord like this that serves two separate functional purposes simultaneously to smooth out a transition between keys is called a pivot chord, which I talked about in more detail in a previous video. I'll link to it at the end. The abundance of key changes throughout Toho's music and their role in helping shape the structure of each tune is a unique aspect of the series music that I find very interesting. There's a big, wild, and woolly world of Toho music out there, and if either of these pieces piqued your interest at all, I'd recommend going and doing some exploring for yourself. Big thanks to patrons MDCT and Orbital Magpie for requesting Toho music. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider joining these two by checking out my Patreon page here. If you'd like, you can also follow me on Twitter at 8BitMusicTheory. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.